It's your returning champion, Elgin Tensity, a.k.a. Trapicola with Swiss on Rye. A North Carolina high school district blocked competition between one of its school's female volleyball teams and the rest of the teams in its district after a trans athlete put his wig on, spiked the ball, and pushed the girl's wig back. Let's see how making everything about alphabet people can lead to great stats in the box score, though not at the box office. This video from Max Preps shows the volleyball matchup between Hiwassi Dam versus Highlands High. Cherokee County School Board member Arnold Matthews says the forceful hit of a spiked ball left one Hawassi volleyball player with neck and head injuries. Resulting in long-term concussion symptoms, including vision problems. The girl has still not yet been cleared to play again by her primary care physician or a neurologist, but she still has fewer problems in her head than the trans player who knocked her out. Matthews says the Cherokee County Board of Education stepped in and voted to cancel the games of all the county high schools. Murphy, Andrews, and Hawassi against Highlands because of, quote, safety concerns. This isn't just about safety, but fairness. The more trans athletes allowed on girls' teams, the more injuries will arise. That'll kill the sport eventually. If I wanted to see a girl who can take a face shot get severely injured from the jump, I'd rewatch TwitchCon. The board never specified what those concerns were. But I will. The Cherokee representatives don't want anyone losing their tops for trophies like they're getting scalped. Nobody has identified the trans athlete, but after a member of the Highlands team posted a highlight reel that included this footage, that head tucker could be a household name with the headhunters. We came here to the Cherokee County School Board for a scheduled interview with the superintendent, but someone walked out and handed us this statement. Later, the superintendent came back out and told us this. I loved her work in the faculty, which was also about an unusually powerful creature taking over a high school by pretending to be a girl. Primary in our concern is just the health of the student who's injured and the uh, emotional uh, responses of the teams who are not getting to play and, and all the teams, uh, in, including Highlands. She wouldn't give us more details. If you're wondering what the explanation is, well, when it comes to the Highlanders, there can only be one. The education board is terrified of backlash. The competitive advantage issue certainly has to come up in any scenario with that type of transgender conversion per se. I can tell you that the board wasn't searching out this kind of thing. It was brought to our attention based on safety concerns. He clarified that he does not know detailed personal information about the student athlete in question. The board didn't do too much digging on those things, and likely could not have obtained such information even if members tried. If anything, they'd have gotten complaints from their own team. Weeks before this incident, a Vermont high school girls volleyball team complained that their trans female teammate made them uncomfortable in the girls locker room. Apparently, he sat there and watched them change. He went from playing dress up like it's Halloween to watching girls undress like he's in Hollywood. Now the girls have to change in a single stall bathroom while the dude can waltz in like he owns the place and change at will despite lacking the right plumbing like Elon Musk. The problem is so easy to figure out that there's no way the education board hasn't done so. It just doesn't want to talk about it. In Cherokee County, residents have strong opinions about the cancellation. Canceling all the events for one for one incident that it's just not right. It's not right. There's risk in there's risk in getting out of bed in the morning. Yes, but pitting a male athlete against a female athlete increases the latter's risk of getting into a hospital bed. There's risk in going, you know, crossing the street, going to the store. It's important to reduce unnecessary risks, and the best way to do so in this case would be to keep the trans player off the girls' team. Letting high school boys join a group of girls just to score with them makes Highlands High look like Highland High. I'm sure the teammate that did get hurt wants them to go out there and fight for it, right? Exactly. That's what we do. They should fight other female players, not optional endgame bosses. The reporter must not have told this volleyball dad what the coaches thought. I think the odds of injury in these non-contact sports aren't high. But in particular, in this meeting, a coach of 40 years said they'd never seen a hit like this. That's because over the past 40 years, he hasn't had to deal with an agenda like this. Back in his day, the district didn't care more about how a dude felt in short shorts than how a girl felt in a neck brace. Supporters of this farce might point out how poorly the girl played, their own experiences of volleyball players getting bonked that hard, or the fact that Highlands ended up losing in the playoffs. But they're missing the point. Incidents like this one will be far more common and devastating if women's sports leagues allow male athletes to compete in them, as they can generate more power and, in girls' volleyball, play with a lower net. Good luck to any girls overcoming those disadvantages. I've heard of David and Goliath stories before, but in general, someone with one rock in a sling won't beat someone with two rocks in a sack. Zero!
Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, 